it was the the D was just an absolute shambles. So it was trying to find a, a partner who was going to compliment him and obviously he was injured for a wee while as well. So um yeah, I think a, a frustrating um frustrating year for any part of the D. But we know what Sully's capable for. It's just hoping that the new guy brings in somebody that's that's gonna be the right person for him to work with. Stephen, do you agree with that? Are you happy to see Zach back? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean there's not as many uh, Brit D men in the league that you can go to. Obviously, we've got two now, but you know the, the higher end Brits like your your Stevie Lee's and things like that are going to cost a fortune. Ben O'Connor, so you know you need to try and get these guys when they're young and develop them, help them help their game on. And we've seen Sully over the last few years. He's he's played well at times last year. He, not so much, but as Jen said, um, nobody was going to play well with that, <laughs> that defence last year. So. You know, just we need to get the the right guy in to 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 play with him and and, and get him through the games. And you know, I, I don't think he's that far off not needing a a player like that beside him. He'll be one of the the D men who's is able to hold his own by himself. You know, but yeah, he must be knocking uh, on the door of the British team as well soon. Yeah, you, you'd think so, especially with the guys like Weaver who are ancient. Let's face it, let's face it you know, so. It, it, this is his time, I think, to, to break out, and hopefully, he'll, hopefully, he'll do it. Yep, and I think as well, it's fair to say, Graham, that even though he's a young Brit playing in the last year was only his third season in the league, he was he was never the worst defender we had in the ice, was he last year? <laughs> <laughs> far far from it. Can I get away with saying that? Absolutely, you can say yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I th- no, I, I really I don't have much else to add. To be honest with you, I mean, I agree that he he was obviously he learnt a lot under McKeever for that one season, and I just hope that last season was maybe just character building for him. And I think alluding to the point that, or sorry, the point that, that Stephen was alluding to, if it was character building, then he should be a stronger player going into this season, and maybe a little less dependent on needing another strong D man beside him. But obviously, we hope that's what he ends up with. But um, yeah, and, and knocking on the door with the GB team, absolutely. He, I think he was in Pete Russell's initial pool for yeah, the yeah. World Championships, wasn't he? So yeah, he is knocking on the door, and maybe we'll make that next step, especially with an aging GB squad. So yeah, he's he's got a bright future ahead of him, and uh, yeah, depending on what he, what kind of uh, partnership he ends up with, he could have a cracking season. So delighted to see him back. Yep, and there's also, I mean, we don't really usually talk about rumours, but there was, there was rumours that he might. Um, return down south with one of the newer teams um, so you know I'm glad that that didn't come to fruition I'm glad we've got him back again um, Jordan Boesa has also signed um, again 16, 17 he'll be this year but 16 years old he did get chances last year I think he played in 20 games or so and he never looked out of place did he Stephen I mean He's, he's for 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 last year. Being a sixteen year old, he's, he's quite a big body, isn't he? He's not he's not small for his age. I and mean, I think it's just we like to see the local guys coming through to get him on now. Hopefully, he can kick on and, and you know get a wee bit more ice time next year. Learn a wee bit more. Um, I take it the the deal uh, with Solway is still in place where he can be getting regular games down there at the top of what he's you know learning up here again. Great to see him back, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is definitely. I mean, the the talent's obviously there. Uh, probably not quite ready for full minutes in the in the team just yet, you know. And depending on how the team is built this year, it's it's probably best not to do that and let them develop naturally. But it's good to, as you said, it was good to see him and the 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 noise when he got his first point uh, last season. I think it was just an assist, but mm-hmm. the noise of the crowd showed that. They, they like to see like a local a local guy getting his chance, and they'll they'll support him through through thick and thin when he when he does get that chance. Jennifer, again, I mean, is there much to, you can add to, to that? Just saying, it's it's nice to have young guys, young Scottish guys, we can we can watch develop. Yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, obviously, um, is when he was playing for Team GB, he played under eighteen and under twenty, and he's what obviously just just turned seventeen or just about to turn seventeen, and he can score at under twenty level. So that's that's just massive potential, and obviously that was his first year um, full time training with the team. So you can you, you can only get better. Yeah, I mean, he'd done well playing with Solway 
last year, got 25 points in 18 games. And, you know, as there's a big gap between the NIHL and the Elite League, and we don't kind of know, we kind of know what's going to happen next year, but in, in terms of what league they'll be playing in. But, you know, he's, he's definitely not that. I mean, a couple of years maybe, but it's just nice to have him back. And, Graham, Josh Grievison, is that a player you noticed when uh, we played Dundee? Uh, I've got to be honest and say no. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got to be honest and say I, I don't know much about him. I recognise yeah. I recognise the name. I think you well, don't have forty odd games for stars last season, but I am really struggling to remember him. I, I can I can only be honest in that respect. But you know, as again, as one of the one of the young Brits as part of the squad, and and certainly picking up on some of the social media talk about him, then you know I've only heard good things from that point of view. So yeah, great if he comes in and uh, and looks the part as as uh, Mister Bressa does, then fantastic. You can only hope for that. Yep, Stephen, you've got to assume he's going to be like a seventh D. Um, I can't see them putting you know the uh, Zach and Josh as as you know a five and six and and going for four. Import D, you know, you're assuming he's going to be the seventh man and they're taking a cover injuries and get some ice time, yeah? Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd think so, but again, it's, it's a bit, I thought it was an odd one that we signed another D man at the time. Not that I was against the signing anyway, I just thought, well, we've got Sullivan, we'll probably go with our usual five imports and, uh, and five import D, as you, you were saying there. And to, to get another Brit, get a D man in it is, is good because I was saying earlier, there's not many fantastic ones to, to pick from at a, a reasonable price so the, the, the fact we've got someone else I think you're right it'll be a 7th D for injury, injury cover but it's a good thing to have you know it's, we've seen players or last year there was like about 3 D men you could drop every game never mind being injured but you know just having that extra bit of insurance if something does get suspended or injured that he can come in and do a job is, is good going forward well, there's also, Jennifer, we've got to consider the, and I'm not suggesting that's the only reason they signed them, but you've got the under-23 rule, and we've now got three under-23s in Zach, Josh Grievison and Jordan Buesa. Um So we've filled that um, part of the roster now, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, it looks good. And the thing with um, Josh as well, he might be like unknown to us, but like you don't get picked for under-20 GB team if you're absolutely garbage. So there's obviously some potential there. We just probably didn't notice it where he, where he was playing in Dundee last year. So, no, give the guy a chance. Yep, and it'll be nice to look forward to seeing him playing. Um, obviously, tonight as well, just when we came on to record this, Barry McKenzie has been re-signed again for the clan. It, what, not a big surprise, although, you know, you can maybe thought Finner might have tried to punch him as well, but, you know, Barry's back, um, come back for what will be his third season with Brayhead and, you know, he's, he's exactly the kind of a bit more veteran player than than the guys we've just talked about. Um, he can knock the bu- knock the puck in the net when he's required to do so. He can play in all three lines or four lines if we do go to four lines next year. Um, and he's he's just a guy that's great. He, he gives his body up every shift, and he's the kind of guy you'd like to have about the place, isn't he, Graham? He is a big Barry McKenzie fan and delighted to have him back. And as you say, what, what that was a concern for me because I thought, you know, and presumably we'll talk about it, but um, the Finner clan targets, I thought he might be one of them. So delighted to see him back. Uh, I think, has he signed another extension as well to his contract? I, I to his don't contract? know, to be honest. I haven't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, it's, an, ex- it's an extension, yes. yeah. Right, okay. I mean, Stephen says, you know, for all that's worth, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a statement, isn't it? So I think from that point of view, it's good news. Yeah, good players, you say, gritty. Uh, he can score goals. I really like to see a bit more ice time from him uh, than, than last year. Uh, obviously, it'll be interesting to see how the, how the new coach does that. But, um, yeah, delighted to see him back. It's a, a, a good player for us and... Uh, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens next season. Yep, Jane. I mean, three hundred and forty-six games according to Elite Prospects. He's he's played. He's one hundred fourteen points. It's like point three three points per game for the guy that we saw over the last couple of years. If he was getting more ice time, he might be able to improve on that. Eh? I mean, they certainly got lots of ice time. Is pretty much what was our our first penalty kill unit between mm-hmm. him and Haywood. So yeah, that's that's certainly something that um, we kind of need to keep a hold on. But no, I, I like McKenzie, and he didn't get as much chance last year as he did like the previous season, where like whenever he was able to slot into whichever position, he did it really really well. Whereas last year, that that kind of didn't really happen as much, just because we didn't run the four lines. But hopefully, the, the new guy will be able to see um, McKenzie's potential and kind of use him. For, for what he's, he's best for. Yep. And I always remember him, I think he's done it a couple of times, but last year I remember him scoring the, the winning goal down in Sheffield 
uh, Stephen, and it, it just proves that he can do it on on any stage. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, he's a good player to have. He, he he can play any any right line, as you said, and he's he's not just a really good defensive player. He's a a good defensive player, as Jen was saying when he gets all the penalty kill minutes. And you need these energy players who can just throw out, take the body of the opposition, and wear them down, so you're. Your, your main scoring lines can come out and do the business against them. So, uh, absolutely delighted with this one. And that's all the players we've got signed so far. I think the only one we're kind of expecting now of the two-year kind of deals to be confirmed is now Matt Haywood. I think, um, do you know, I, I, after having no him been here from day one, it would be really weird if he didn't um, sign the dotted line. But hopefully, you know, we'll be talking about him in the next podcast. Um, and hopefully we'll be talking about some new players, maybe some returning players. But um, it's time to start, say, waving goodbye to some people who've moved on and we know definitely won't be coming back. Obviously, we had Al Levitt retiring last year. We kind of done that at the end of the podcast last year. Matt Keith, um, we think he's retired. <laughs> we think he's retired. <laughs> uh, maybe he's just keeping his options open. Um, it certainly hasn't got him retired on Elite Prospects just quite yet. Um, I don't know, we'll see let's assume he has retired obviously Mikhail Zaykovsky, we kind of talked about him at the start of the show, Graham he's uh, away back to Sweden um, overall did he, did, did he come as advertised did, you know, I think he was what he said on the tin is that to me? yeah, I mean basically yeah, no, I'm well, no surprised what we got from well, no, I, I, well, I can only really go back to what I said earlier, and that is, you know, he wasn't, um, I think, being, trying to be nice about it, he, he wasn't our first choice uh, goalie. And I think what we ended up with, I mean, you know, I, I, I thought he was good. He had some outstanding performances. Again, it's, I mean, goalies need to be measured on, I mean, it's like Chris I always used to say, any goalie can pull off an absolutely fantastic save or have a great game. It's how you, it's how you get on throughout the whole season. And I think, you know, I think Zeke had some great games and he had some not so great games. Uh, but again, you know, he had a poor D in front of him as we've yeah. already talked about. That's so big that, with him whenever that, you talk that about that was, it, Yeah, <laughs> that was a major, that was a major factor in itself. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think. I, I mean, I don't. I don't want to be too faced about it because I was. I was a bit of a Zeke fan, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, I think with a, with a decent D in front of him, probably the stats would have been a lot better. So, no, good luck to him in terms of uh, where he's moving on to. But uh, as I say again, I've just got to be honest and say that I hope that we get something more of the level that we really need to be able to really move on in this league. And that is, you know, we, we need we need a we need a goalie that's going to produce those real sort of, you know, in the 900s, well into the 900s type save percentages and, and you know, I don't know, two, two and a half goals against average and less and what have you. We need, we need, that, we need those sorts of figures in to, to be able to, to really move on. So hopefully we get that. But no, best of luck to him. I think, you know, we need a goal that can steal you the odd game or two, Stephen, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we need to get this right this year. I don't think we got the, the goalie position right last year, as Graham was saying there. And Zajkowski had some really good games, but there was also a few soft ones where you'd think you would want them back. And he was injured for a bit, and it probably wasn't the best season for him, especially with that defence. I think most goalies would have struggled behind that defence. But, you know, if we need to get this position right. And John Tripp's making all the, the right noises just now, saying that, that's who he's focusing on. He's, I think even in an interview today with Craig Anderson, he said he's even started speaking to a couple of goalies and seeing seeing what can be done. So you know, if, hopefully, if he spend enough time and get the right guy in, we'll we'll have a a good start. And you know, Zaykovsky wasn't the worst goalie we've ever had. I'll say that, but <laughs> um, he wasn't the best either. So you know, good luck to the guy. I think he's back in his home, for his hometown team and. I'm sure he'll do well there, but we, we need to get something a bit better. And Jennifer, I need to apologise to Gary Russell, don't I? Yeah. Because I forgot you about do. him when I was you talking forgot about, about Rusty. Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about Rusty. You think, you think we'll be able to get Rusty back as well? I hope so. I mean, obviously, it's his, if his other job is still able to be as accommodating, because that's um, obviously a, a big, big factor in whether he's able to, to play as a backup, whether his other career. It um, must be difficult splitting your time between two careers. I don't know how people find find the time to do it. 
But no, of course, we would love Rusty to get back. Obviously, got a lot more um, ice time this season than perhaps any of us would have guessed. And I don't think there's any bun- any one of us that would say that he, he didn't do it well. He never let us down, did he? Yeah, he never let us down. So, yeah, no, I'd love, love to see him back. Another wave goodbye to Corey Cowick. Um, did we have, is there any real Corey Cowick fans amongst the four of us? 